Okay, so I, want, I want a bonus XP. Okay, to, so I'm just. Did we settle on something, or did we? I can't even remember where we finished, to be honest with you. Okay, exactly, and that's that's a great conversation starter because, to be honest, um, that's where I wanted to start things off to say, like, okay, do you, like, let's figure out exactly where we were and everything. Like, you guys can see this on the map right now, right? I've revealed some area. Forget where the mobs are and everything like that. It's just I'm revealing what where we were last adventure. To just kind of bring back into your heads that um, here we were. Um, you had just killed this shadowy dragon thing, and you guys were about to make camp, from what I remember correctly. Um, again, you guys, you didn't know exactly what it was you killed. Oh, this is another thing that's worth stating is the fact that the last, like, half hour or so of the recordings that will be put on YouTube got corrupted. So the recordings that I have of you killing this dragon thing are gone. So for the sake of just the recording, it would be great if we just went over the fact that you guys had killed these goblins, you then went into this hut, uh, or this old, it was a like an old hunting shack that had been abandoned, and found this like black shadowy serpentine thing roaming around inside that you engaged in combat as soon as you entered, essentially. Which, I don't know if you guys remember, Vengar's entry to the back door was fairly amusing. <laughs> Kick the door. Fail. Kick the Kick door. The door. Fail. Try oh, and yeah, open the door. Open it. It's unlocked, yeah. <laughs> so, um... Yeah, like saying in the fire service, "Try before you pry." Try before you pry <laughs> is a great. That is something I remember learning in the military too. Is like open the door before you shoulder check it. Like, anyways, try before you pry is better. Um. So after combat has resolved and everything like that, at closer inspection, you find that it's a young, like purpley type serpentine. I mean, from from knowledge and conversation, the three of you come to the conclusion that it's a young dragon of some sort. And it seemed to sort of manipulate the darkness around it slightly. Um, but it was only four or five feet long, and you would have hated to see um, if it was full grown what it would have been capable of. Um, the only thing that I really wanted to touch is Iron Lung. Did you, did you do something with it? Similar to your rabbit's foot situation, I can't remember. If yeah, that I remembered. I cut off its jaw. Remember, and right? Then, uh, Jeremy wanted to take the head to have it identified. You know, like what hell? What the hell was this? And I gave him the threw the head at him. Remember? You're back here. Okay, so you chopped off its head, and you guys are gonna take back its head with you. But you took its jaw, Ireland. Yeah, I had originally taken its jaw. Okay, that's before fine. We had that discussion. Okay, and so are you just going to chop off its jaw and kind of put it in your pack and take it with you and you'll deal with the, the process of that later kind of thing, yeah. I guess? Yeah. Okay, so that makes sense. So, um, Vengar, you have a jawless young dragon's head with you. Um, so aside from that, um, the only thing that we needed to deal with really is loot. Um, which, th searching through all the goblins' corpses and the cabin itself, which actually had a bag of coins in the back room, um, you guys pile it all together at 57 gold, which, if you divide it evenly amongst the three of you, is 19 gold each. Um, so please take note of that. I think you probably are all in the region of about 50 gold-ish or something like that, but... Um, so aside from that, you guys were about to make camp, which I can sort of start dictating um, that event. Um, is there anything other than that before we start that um, you guys want to deal with, or you want to ask, or or anything like that? Or are we like are we good to go? I'm good. I, I'm I'm square on what we were doing before now. Just need that refresher. Um. Okay. Jeremy, you're good to go? Yep. Okay. Yeah, just check your sky. Um, okay, so you guys make camp um, after having dealt with the whole 
goblin situation and everything like that. Um, if I remember, you guys did not want to make camp inside the building. So I'm going to say you make camp just to the uh, south here on this little ridge where you guys have a good visual um, situation of the whole surrounding area. And uh, yeah, if you set watches and everything like that, you feel like you guys are in a very safe location. Um, the evening that you spend with Braxis is sort of a curious one. Um, once you went through the whole process of setting up camp, which was a pain in the first place, because if you remember, it was dark when you guys got there already. Um, but now it's starting to get really late and sort of mist is dropping over the forest and there's sort of an eerie sense of silence that bothers everyone. Um, the three of you sit around a small campfire, just sort of making small talk as you're um, preparing um, dinner, just something quick to eat before you guys crash. Um, Braxis is really quiet at first through the whole process, um, sort of like sitting there, uh, pondering things, letting you guys set up for most of the camp, which is a change for him because if you remember, he's been fairly boisterous up to this point. Um, and you can see that he's hitting his wineskin like pretty hard and it's not even dinner. Um, and it's not until after you guys have completed dinner that he sort of joins into the light conversation that you two have been having. Um, when he just straight up asks the two of you, um, do you think that Bay Grill knew it was out here? Which you two can respond to as you like. Obviously making reference to the dragon creature thing. Yeah. So, like, uh, I, I, I'm i not sure. I, I think you might have more insight into that than us. What's... <laughs> you're clear, clearly a capable warrior. Clearly, you, you know, were looking out for us during this battle and, and, and did a good job of holding your own. But... <sighs> Why is it, you know, you know more about why he sent us mm -hmm. and why he was so eager to send us with you I, than we might. I don't know. I mean, he sent us here for goblins. He, We were on what seemed like a routine mission. He sent us here for goblins, and I don't even know what that was. I mean, it was, Kelemvor knows what that was, some sort of small dragon. Um, Bagrel isn't a bad man. I mean, he's stern and he's capable of sending soldiers to their death if it serves a greater good. But can you think of any good from us coming out here and dying? Would the, do you think that could have been his intent? I'm not sure. So Iron's just kind of sitting near the campfire, cleaning off the, the bones and teeth of the jaw. And I just comment that... Uh, I highly doubt that he would have sent us into something like that without some type of warning. It doesn't seem like the type of dude that isn't, or the type of guy that uh, is not thorough, you know? Yeah. And Brax is sort of like silently nods. Um, I said dude in D&D, &D, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> Dude's fine. Um, Brax is just sort of like silently nods. Um, Drinking heavily from his flask, sort of like holding his head. You can tell by now that he's already like ridiculously drunk and um, starts to like kind of go quiet, like he's like taking in the whole situation, sort of making things over. So I, I kind of not not being completely happy with where we got. <sighs> you know, I know he knows more. There's no way this this is. Uh, this is everything he knows. So I kind of start working on him from you know, going going back a bit further, you know, uh, for the purpose of... Uh, now, does Krishna know... Should, should he know the history here, or what? Krishna can hear any of this, but uh, Krishna is an accomplished enough role player that it's fine. His character is not going to know any of this. Okay, okay. Um, he's just here because we're starting the adventure, but... Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. won't, his character won't know any of this, but... Okay, okay. Yeah. So, go, going back to, you know, the first time we met you and seeing you being punished in the courtyard, um, why, you know, why were you being punished and why were you acting 
you know what would otherwise be out of turn. You're, you're clearly a capable, you know, uh, clearly capable of working with a team and clearly capable of holding your own. And and and, and you know, you've you've shown us nothing but respect and goodwill. What did you do, really, that caused you know the, this to be brought down on you? And I mean, I feel that <laughs> that may have something to do with why we were sent here. If he did really know what was in that cabin, right? The iron just kind of uh, like leans his head to the side, like he's listening to something, but it's obvious he's not listening to Bengar. He's trying to hear, right? Um, Braxis takes another like long haul off his wineskin and looks into the fire and like goes quiet for a moment, like he's trying to like figure out exactly like how he's going to go about answering this question. And at first he says, well, I've broken ranks in combat, but it's something that you, the three of you already know. And before you can really like continue, he, he sort of like continues on with the story. I didn't always live inside the barracks in Ashland for I've been a rider for many years, but I actually used to own a small house just outside of town to the northeast, maybe a half hour walk outside of town. Um, about four months ago, uh, when a group of riders, including myself, were out on a patrol toward Peldon's Helm, uh, it's an overnight trip, um, and we had stayed the night. I can't be sure why, but in the middle of the night a group of goblinkin raided my home. Bastards didn't even go anywhere near town or near any of the neighbors' homes, uh, just mine. They burned my house, they killed my wife, and they killed my daughter. Slit their throats and just left them in the front yards to bleed. And he goes silent and again takes another haul off his wineskin and looks into the fire and everybody sort of becomes awkward and embarrassed at sort of his forefront nature all of a sudden um, not knowing what to say before anyone can really think of how to respond he just sort of like gets off the log that he's sitting on and rolls over and pulls his cloak over his head with his cloak to the back of the fire like he's just he's had enough he's gonna go to sleep um, Someone that's observant might have noticed that Iron was rubbing the seaweed bands on his wrists as he elaborated on that story. Very valid point to that. Probably should have made Vendor roll a perception check for that, but that's fine. <laughs> um, I can roll a perception check for whether I actually saw it. Right, right. No, that, that's good. That's good. That's okay. that's a, that's a fine enough. I I don't. From what I remember, you actually don't know enough about Iron Lung's past that you actually even Jeremy, you don't even know what the fuck he's talking about. I have so, I have no clue. Yeah. I know nothing about most okay. of the things that his character does. Yeah, exactly. So you know, there was a heart. There was a heartfelt story about family families dying and uh, Iron Lung rubbing rubbing the seaweed or tied around his wrists. <laughs> Um, so I'm going to assume that that's like you guys are ready to crash for the evening kind of thing. Like you set up maybe a watch or something and call a night. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I think I feel, I feel a little sheepish not having expected that kind of answer. Sure. It's a very yeah. <laughs> like emotionally intensive answer that Brax is sort of, I mean, he's been, as much as he's been crude and sort of jovial, he is not said anything that would be emotionally involving since you two have met him. So it was a very forward point. Could be because he's so wasted, but anyways. So yeah, the three of you um, fall asleep, you know, setting a watch. And you wake in the morning, if not having a long sleep, at least a restful one, as most sleep out under the stars is. Um, any gloom from the previous night is gone and the sun is just sort of peeking up over the top of the trees, warming the ground and your skin as the three of you start to pack up camp in sort of relative silence, but not uh, awkwardly so. 
Um, if Braxis is at all upset over the last night's talk, he doesn't show a sign of it um, in the slightly. He just sort of groans and holds his head as he takes a haul off his wineskin again, um, looking toward Iron Lung, giving it an elbow, and saying, like, oh, hair of the dog, eh, dragon? Uh, we should start to get headed back. No reason to stay here unless you two have other plans. I assume you're interested in heading back to Asha Benford to uh, claim your pay from the captain. Uh, yeah, I, I don't expect he's he's really at mo very likely if he knows what's here. He's not expecting us to be claiming it, but uh, let's go try. Rex is sort of like nods, um, looking to Iron Lung because Iron Lung had sort of stated that. You know, he assumed the captain wouldn't have set this up, right? But um, sort of nods and says, okay, yeah, let's, uh, let's head back. 